Well, for more, we're joined in the studio by Douglas Ollivant. He is a former director for Iraq with the U.S. National Security Council and the senior vice president of Mountain International, a global strategic consulting firm. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. As we said, these are key ministries they're voting on here. They should be uh, carefully considered, but how much longer can they delay choosing these ministers and how detrimental is it for the country? Um, actually, they can delay a long time. It's important to remember that in Nouri al-Maliki's second term as the prime minister in 2010 to 2014, he never appointed a minister of defense or interior. He had acting ministers that he installed without parliamentary approval that never had full powers. So this is not a crisis. They have a government. Um, there are a couple of ministries they disagree on. Some are just resume problems, as you alluded mm. to, too many ties to the former regime. So they'll make substitutions there. The real fights are for defense and interior. And in, but they're intramural fights. That's important to remember. The, for interior, you have the Sauterists are vetoing the choice of the PMU, the mm. Hashid list. Um, a man named Falafia who had a significant role in the last government and the Sauterists are saying no, no one from the last government can be there but his party is digging in on him. So these are intramural fights. Similarly with defense, you have one Sunni party backing one candidate, one Sunni party backing another. They've not yet come to a consensus internally. Once they do, the larger parliament will probably approve uh, whoever they come to a consensus on. Okay, so you're saying it's not a crisis necessarily but unfortunately it really highlights the serious sectarian divides that still exist in Iraq. It's certainly a bad look, but again, these are really about internal fights within the sectarian groupings and not crises between them. It's not as if the Shia and Sunni, and for that matter the Kurds, are fighting over a single ministry. Each group is waiting for each group to work it out internally. And I think it is important to remember, Iraq's real crisis right now is economic mm. and services and infrastructure, and those key ministries are filled. Finance is full, electricity oil, agriculture, water, uh, industry, okay. those ministries are full and they're moving out and they seem to have a plan. Okay. So what do you foresee happening? What will get done today? I'm hopeful we see at least a couple ministers, three, four, five approved mm -hmm. today. It would not surprise me to see a ministry or two or three pushed out another couple weeks, even a month or two. Okay, but then going back quickly to uh, what you were saying about the the really important ministries, in your right. in your opinion, being the economic ones, the right. ones that decide the finances, those have been appointed, but still they really are struggling with a the budget. Right. They've they've managed to get uh, you know the, the civil salaries paid, but they still aren't rebuilding Iraq. It's going to take them a while to get those contracts moving. The mm. you know we just now have a real government the last few weeks. They have money, they have the access to the capital that they got in the Kuwait conference in February. We should now see them start to move out on getting the key projects, rebuilding of Mosul, water mm -hmm. projects in Basra, uh, these things moving in very short order. You sound confident, but a lot of people aren't. I mean, there's been a, so much environmental damage done in various parts of Iraq. I mean, we just saw a crisis with uh, the poisoning of major fish supplies right. that feeds a significant proportion of the country with traditional food that they're right. so used to. How is, how is that going to get done? Yeah, let's not understate the problem. I mean, mm -hmm. Iraq has an environmental disaster essentially on their hands. They have uh, infrastructure problems everywhere. They had real issues getting all the pilgrims out of Karbala this mm -hmm. year. There are very real problems. I'm not saying we're going to see them all fixed. I am saying that we should see at least some improvement. Uh, the question is, can Iraq fix things fast enough and add jobs fast enough right. to accommodate all the new youth that are going to be asking for jobs every new year? About exactly. a million new people needing jobs every year in Iraq. Right. Okay. Douglas, we'll unfortunately have to leave it there. Thanks so much for Thank coming you. in.